You have to have some way to protect yourself. You can't just plan on this system being there for you, and yeah. especially in the case of a natural disaster. Yeah. You know, I just was v furious when I was hearing that you were being labeled in that way and that they were f ruining your business. I'm like, that just doesn't make any sense. It's a valuable thing to learn. It's a valuable thing. You can choose not to incorporate it into your life. You can choose to. But the idea that someone teaching something does a, I mean, is that going to be the case with everything? What, is that the case with jujitsu? Like, like you know how to fight, so you're you're dangerous, and we don't want dangerous people. Is that what it is? I mean, at what point in time do you decide that preparedness and being a, a someone who plans out for the worst case scenario is a bad thing? Hmm. I think you remember remember back in the day. Uh, I grew up uh, in ninjutsu. I took ninjutsu ah. back in the day. Was it Stephen Hayes? Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that dude. He was always on the cover of Black Belt magazine, oh, shit. throwing stars and shit. Yeah. What is it? Was it uh, American Ninja or yeah. was it White, Nin <laughs> White there was Ninja? A, there was a bunch of movies. There was American Ninja movies, and there was this one guy who was like the most famous ninjutsu guy. But if you ever watch that guy like move around. <laughs> He fucking he didn't know jack shit. He was helpless. It was crazy, man. <laughs> my my uh, my first experiences in ninjutsu were kind of funny because all my instructors outside of uh, Fort Bragg, North Carolina, I was in Spring Lake at the time. Were they were Green Berets? So imagine a whole bunch of Green Berets. They're studying the art of the time, which is ninjutsu. It's like the what dark year was art. this? This is uh, ni early nineties. Early okay, 90s. so this is like before UFC. Before UFC, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Which opened up everybody's eyes. Like, oh, shit. 100%. Yeah. I, I mean, I have a, uh, my mom, we, we were broke as shit, man. I, my mom was very, we were very poor at the time. Um, and she couldn't afford a lot, but she was like, you know, I took Taekwondo, like every Korean kid uh, in Fayetteville. And was like, this is this is lame. I want to do something a little bit more aggressive. Is there something like a dark art or something? A dark art. <laughs> there, there wasn't. <laughs> there wasn't BJJ. I wanted to like you know practice katana fighting with mm -hmm. wood katanas. And uh, a ninjutsu studio opened up in Spring Lake, and I go in there, and one of the first classes that I had, there was mirrors in the in the the dojo, and the instructor comes in, and he goes, uh, Mike, I want you to stand in that mirror. And I was, I stood in the mirror and I'm looking at myself and just like staring at myself and my mom's kind of looking and she takes off. She's like, I'll be back in an hour. She comes back and I, I'm, I'm looking at the mirror thinking in my mind, oh, this is just part of the thing. You know, we're going to do some meditation, like whatever, whatever, like we're just going to do this right. and then get to work. He leaves us there for an hour. Staring in the mirror. Staring in the fucking mirror. And, and my mom comes back and she like looks at me and I could see her out of the corner of my eye. And I leave with her, and she's like, what the fuck is going on? Like, I pay good money for this. And you stared in the mirror And you stand in the mirror for an hour. What is going on? <laughs> um, I don't know if it was like a tactic or whatever it was, but I, I actually learned a lot about myself um, in those many instances. I, I, I don't know if that's practical, but, you know, for a kid who had, you know, probably AD, ADD at the time, having to stand still for an hour and stare at myself for an hour, you, you figure your shit out really fast. You figure your happy place. You become more disciplined. A and That's hilarious that it actually worked. Yeah, it actually worked. Because that there's a lot of those guys that existed <sighs> before the UFC that were just frauds. There was a, a shit ton of them, and they would start their own schools, and they would teach people, and they, they literally didn't know how to fight. They, didn't they were know making anything. shit up. And they were making shit up. Yeah. There's a lot of that. Uh, my friend Eddie Bravo went to a place like that. He started off at a place that was ma just making shit up. And his instructor pretended that he was going off to China to train. And, uh, and then Eddie saw him in the parking lot at a fucking supermarket. <laughs> like he saw his car. He's like, I thought he was in China. Of course. And he, he goes and the guy's in there. It's like he's just a bullshit artist. Yeah, those days nobody had it figured out. Nobody had it mapped. Yeah. And whatever the master said in the dojo was gospel. And it was held in high esteem. Yeah, like, anything this dude said, I would I would have bought into it. Do you ever um, go to uh, fakebelt dot com or McDojo Life oh, on yeah. Instagram? They're funny as <laughs> shit, man. <laughs> There's so many of them. Yeah. There's so many fake martial artists still out there. They're still doing it. It's it's amazing that they still exist. And then the weird thing is um, this thing they do where they like have this death touch on people and the people just all fall down dude 
because it seems like these people really do believe that they've been touched by some crazy chi energy and they fall and they they can't move their body there's a lot of them there's like hundreds of these videos it's like what is that sort of mass psychosis what is this like hypnosis like what what is it about that death touch thing that it's so prevalent yeah it's like uh what would they call it it's like uh survival surrender is a term in survival psychology where you submit and you just give up it's like a primal instinct in us to have like a mechanism to kind of give up when when there is a last ditch effort and we just kind of pass out it's like whatever that mechanism is same thing happens in church like with uh people mm, speaking in tongues and they right. touch i had a my mom was going through some shit when i was uh, a teenager and we used to go to different churches all the time because she was like experimenting and and figuring out her shit and we winded up going to a a tent one time like and a Pentecostal, yeah, dude. It was. They it have was, snakes. It, they had all the shit. They had snakes. They had every fucking thing. <laughs> it was. Fu I looked at my mom. Was like, what? The, what is going on? Like, why are we here? And they brought up my cousin and I in front of everybody. And this dude tried to do the thing on our heads, and my cousin fell. And I'm like, oh, like, oh my god, like he's been touched by God or something. He touches. I'm thinking he's he's gonna shock me. And I'm going to be laying next to my cousin. Right. And he pushes on my head, and I don't feel anything. And I'm waiting for it because I'm thinking, like, my cousin just dropped. I trust my cousin. How old are you at the time? I'm, I'm like 15. And he hits me, and I'm like, nothing happened. And I look at my cousin, and he opens his eyes, and he's, like, looking at me. He kind of smirks, and I'm like, <laughs> oh, fuck. So he hits me, and I fall next to him, and we're laying at each other, like, looking at each other, smiling. I'm like, dude, what the fuck just happened? And my mom, after that, she's like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. I didn't know. It was legit. She was trying to go through. So you just had to lay down. You had to pretend. Just like, we had to pretend. Oh, my God. I, I think a lot of it is that peer pressure. You just. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, if you don't do it, you're the guy who doesn't do it when everybody's doing it. Well, I mean, I can say as a kid that started out in martial arts as a young teenager, when you go there, your instructor has this power over you. That's beyond like they're not just a mentor. They they literally are a master and they're the ones that are going to teach you martial arts. And, you know, I was a pretty disrespectful kid. But when I was in martial arts, everything was yes, sir. No, sir. And, you know, I had like great reverence for the, the dojang. Like I didn't treat it in any way like with disrespect. 